We all know we need to change. Part of what makes us human is our ability to see into potentiality, to see things that could be, and to see better potential states. As it pertains to ourselves, to see a better version of what we could be. In the 2013 film The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, the title character Walter is an expert at this. On a regular basis, he zones out of regular life and imagines an idealized version of himself acting as he'd like to in the world, only to be brought back into mundane life by gawking onlookers. We may not have as vivid imaginary experiences as Walter, yet we can all identify with knowing how we need and want to change ourselves, and then not being able to bring about that desired change. Walter Mitty's story is a good one because, in the end, Walter is able to change to become the kind of person he once only fantasized about. As with so many movies, on first glance this change seems to come about because of a grand call to adventure to far-off places. Such stories are inspirational, but we can sometimes struggle to see their relevance to regular life, which doesn't play out so neatly and dramatically for us in tight two-hour stories with powerful music and constant stunning visuals. But if we can appreciate that the relevance of stories comes from their distillation of patterns of meaning, patterns that can guide our behavior, one of these patterns in Walter Mitty reveals that it wasn't in fact the dramatic adventure that is primarily responsible for Walter's change. At the beginning of the movie, Walter summons the courage to do a simple act, send a wink on an online dating service to a co-worker that he has his eye on. This act leads to a conversation with a customer service worker for the online service who suggests that Walter just talk to his co-worker in person. And this is the nudge he needs to do just that when a situation at work provides the opportunity to interact with her. This then leads to her inviting him to accompany her to pick up her son, and on the way she encourages him to solve a crucial problem by buying a plane ticket and traveling to a new place, full of adventure, which does indeed present him with challenges and environments that cause Walter to grow and transform. Great change has its origin in small, simple decisions, which start chain reactions that lead to the behaviors that come to define us. Once again, we can be a little cynical and say that of course such chains of causation are going to exist in a movie, where all things lead to some neat conclusion of a story. But think about it a little more, because if you look at your own life, you'll find these kinds of chain reactions that start with simple, small decisions within your control and eventually lead to the bigger factors in your life, often which are out of your control, but nonetheless define you for good or ill. Nearly all of us have experienced the phenomena of being in bed uncontrollably scrolling down social media feeds late at night for far too long, searching for the titillating article or video or update from someone we knew in high school that we just know is out there somewhere if we could just find it. None of us are proud of that kind of behavior, but what was the chain that led there? We had placed the phone next to our bed, and as we were dozing off we had the idea to check tomorrow's weather, which led to one last check of email, which led to one last check of social media which then led to finding an interesting little post, which made us wonder what else was out there, which led us to that next hour of searching for that elusive thing. The crucial step, of course, was the phone by the bed. It is fully in our control to plug the phone in to charge in the kitchen or the bathroom, so that when the urge comes to check the weather, likely we would have stayed put under our warm covers. Compare that to the man known for never missing an early morning run with his buddies. We can think that it's due to his unusual discipline and willpower, but trace back the chain reaction to that consistent behavior and not only will you find an alarm set on the other side of the house, which requires him to get out of his bed to turn it off, but you'll find his running clothes laid out by the alarm, beckoning to be put on by his cold body. Both simple things within his control that he puts in place precisely because he knows he is not disciplined and full of willpower. These are basic examples, and life can be much more complex, especially when dealing with ingrained behaviors like substance abuse or our relationships with other people. But the basic principle stands. Most of the behaviors that define who we are have their origin in small decisions that begin a chain of events down a course of least resistance to natural conclusions, much like water flows down a mountain. Returning to Walter Mitty, Prior to the small decisions that brought about Walter's fundamental change, it was as if he ran water down the same topography every day. The same morning routine, the same path to work, the same workplace, the same people, the same stimuli, the same reactions to the stimuli. That's a perfect formula for ensuring your life doesn't change much. 
If you want your life to change, you do need to start by figuring out what the change is you want to bring about, and usually that's the easy part, but then you need to work back from there and discern the chain of events that leads to that goal state. Or if you're trying to cease a negative course of behavior, you have to look at where the chain reaction begins that inevitably leads you to your undesired behavior. Because all of our main behaviors have their origins in small decisions or easily changeable factors in our environment, if you look at the whole course of events, there will be somewhere along the process, usually closer to the beginning, where you realize you have the ability to start the chain or break it. James Clear, who expounds many of these principles in his book, Atomic Habits, emphasizes how we should focus our attention on this process of reaching the goals that we want, not so much on the goals themselves. And we should begin with the simplest part of the chain reaction that we know we can handle without great exertions of willpower, which willpower can usually only be sustained in the short term. If you want to become a runner and all you can handle without a great deal of exertion and willpower is to put on your clothes and shoes and trot down the street 100 meters and back, then just show up and do that again and again. Just show up. Because the actions at that level aren't something that you dread, you'll actually do it. And what happens from there? After a few days, instead of trotting 100 meters and back, you soon find that doing the same for a quarter mile is doable on a sustainable basis and then more. And at some point you're showing up every day running a respectable distance. You've become a runner. You've changed. Of course there's moments in life to exercise some willpower and muscle through things as well. But if you want to maintain change, this should be the exception. In Walter Mitty, the primary change Walter wanted was to find a companion. And so we shouldn't be surprised to find that the movie begins, as does Walter's chain reaction of change, with the part of that process that he could handle at that moment, the simple click of a virtual button. But there's other fundamental insights about change to be found in Walter's story. Notice that even though the first small decision Walter makes was done alone, nearly all of the other decisions he makes as the movie progresses, which lead to his fundamental changes, are helped along and motivated by other people. Todd, the eHarmony representative, his love interest Cheryl, his mother, his idol Sean O'Connell, even his antagonist Ted Hendricks, managing director of The Transition. We make a fundamental mistake when we think of ourselves as something apart from the others around us in the world. We were created through the union of others. We are composed of the information of countless others. We would have died after birth and our cognition wouldn't have developed if others hadn't loved us into fuller existence. The very words we use to frame our thinking we got from others. We are not isolated beings. Our very existence is intertwined with others, and hence for our discussion on change, it is fruitless of thinking of trying to achieve fundamental change by ourselves. We should seek our change amongst others. Many people have lost weight in their lives, but research devastatingly shows that an incredibly high rate of those people gain that weight back within the next few years. Of the very small amount of people who are successful at permanently holding off that weight, one of the common factors is that they lost the weight amongst a group of other people who continue to support each other. In my previous example of the runner who never missed a morning run with his buddies, I failed to mention that another prime factor in his consistency was the thought of his buddies waiting for him at that dark street corner in the cold pre-dawn hours. One of the best aspects of Walter Mitty is to see that miraculous and providential interchange that our world affords, where others help us to change if we let them, and having changed into something better, we then engage with others from a better state to help them to change, and the cycle continues. The last principle of change in this movie that I want to point out is related to the other two. One of the things that most endears this movie to me is its beauty, particularly its stunning and inspirational natural landscapes and color palette. It's crucial to see that this is intimately related to Walter's change and transformation as well. His most dramatic transformations occur as he chooses to place himself in these beautiful and challenging environments. And each time he returns home, having been transformed in ways that are noticeable to the people around him. Why do you look rugged? I pictured you as a little gray piece of paper. But now I see you, and it's like Indiana Jones decided to become the lead singer of The Strokes or something like that. It's <laughs> nuts, I know. Just like with other beings in the world, we cannot see ourselves as separate from the world itself. 
We are literally composed of and nourished from the dust of the earth and the light of the sun. We are not separate from the living systems and processes around us. We are part of them. As we move to different places in the world, we are different people. The world changes us and we in turn change the world in a dynamic relationship. This doesn't just apply to the natural world, but to the buildings we live in, the vehicles we pilot, and the institutions we participate in. An interesting illustration comes from the Vietnam War, where the interaction between American soldiers and the difficult world they were interacting with resulted in a high number of soldiers being addicted to opiates, such as heroin, while in the wartime environment. Based off a purely chemical or disease model of addiction, one would predict that upon returning home, virtually all these soldiers would maintain their addictions. But that's not what occurred. Nearly all of those addicted while in the theater of war returned and were no longer addicted in the theater of their regular homes and communities. You could say they were different people in different places. While earlier we suggested that change can be brought about by starting a course of water at a slightly different place in the landscape, this shows that some kinds of fundamental change can be brought about by changing the landscape itself. These can be both temporary changes in our world or permanent ones. In Walter Mitty, we can see that Walter achieved some of his change by placing himself temporarily in the fundamentally different environments of Greenland, the ocean, Iceland, and Himalayan mountaintops. These helped him break his habitual chain reactions and interact with different worlds that changed him in different ways, and then he returned home. It's important to note, though, that you need not go to such far-off locations to experience fundamentally different landscapes. While those landscape changes were temporary, the story also centers around a permanent change outside of Walter's control, the dissolution of his company, Life Magazine, which also fundamentally changes Walter's landscape in ways that enable his growth and change. In each case, the different landscape changes Walter, and he in turn changes the landscape in another miraculous and providential cycle that lies at the heart of creating better lives and a better world, or a degraded life and a degraded world, because it works both ways. If we seek to exercise wisdom, we can try to discern if some of the landscapes around us, which have so much weight over our behaviors like our work environment, our neighborhood, our friends, may be due for temporary or even permanent refreshings if they're inhibiting the kinds of changes we want to make in our lives. Of course, I wouldn't recommend entertaining these kinds of thoughts to other parts of our landscape, like our immediate family. Better to take them along with you for the adventure. In the movie, Walter's employer, Life Magazine, has a powerful motto. To see the world. Things, things dangerous, dangerous to, to come, come to. To. Yeah. to see behind walls. Which I leave with you now to contemplate as you continue your journey and process of change in our beautiful world. To see the world things dangerous to come to, to see behind walls, draw closer, to find each other, and to feel. That is the purpose of life. If you enjoyed these thoughts, these principles and countless others are part of how Impellis provides a methodology and a team of supportive professionals to help individuals and families bring about needed change and cultivate meaning in their lives. In particular, through our addiction recovery program based in Utah and our family program which aims to help families pass on their values to successive generations. You can learn more at ampelis.org.